In this web talk, I show how to use M plus to do dynamic structural equation modeling, that is DSIM, with cycles. By cycles, I mean circadian rhythms, that is 24-hour cycles such as heart rate, blood pressure, and sleep. In this talk, I focus on the psychological measure of positive affect, which has also been found to show cycles. Now I'll also take a look at tiredness and how those two variables relate to each other. In addition to cycles, weekday effects will also be studied, and I'll show you how to look at that. This is joint work with Tiomer Asparov. It is web talk number seven in the M plus web talk series. It can be seen as a continuation of web talk six, which also focuses on DSIM, uses the same data set, but doesn't get into cycles modeling although it mentions this possibility towards the end on slides 120 to 121. WebTalk 6 gives an introduction to DSEM and is therefore a good starting point for those who are not familiar with the topic, but it's not necessary to first listen to WebTalk 6. The background for this talk is different from previous talks in that it draws on a paper where you can read more about the details. And actually, the structure of the talk is a little different from that of the paper. It's up to you if you want to read the paper first or listen to the talk first. The paper was submitted for publication in February 2024, and three months later, we have improved the algorithms to the point that we could release M plus version 8.11 in May. The paper also comes with a supplemental material which shows M plus inputs, many of which we're going to take a look at and go through here in the talk. And the example, which again is the same as that of WebTalk 6, has to do with modeling of daily cycles and weekday effects for positive affect and tiredness among adolescents 12 to 16. So this is an intensive longitudinal data collection where experience sampling methods have been used. Several measures per day were taken at random time points for seven days, Tuesday through Monday. And the analysis that we described in WebTalk 6, we used the M plus T interval option to discretate, discretize time using three hour bins, as explained in that talk. We have 240 adolescents and we end up with 56 time points. We're gonna look at six, seven category positive affect items relaxed, satisfied, confident, happy, energetic, and excited. And we're going to do an analysis of both the total PA score as well as an analyzing the factors behind the PA items. And again, here you have the introduction to DSEM. This web talk includes a prologue and also an epilogue at the end that further motivates the study of cycles. We're going to take a look at the relationship between uh, positive affect and tiredness. So what we're looking at here in the graph is the uh, observations throughout the week, starting on Tuesday and ending with Monday, seven days later, where we have uh, early morning hours here in the left part of this section of the day and late evening hours over here to the right. And we see that tiredness um, has a dip that is your perkier in the middle of the day and increases to higher tiredness towards the evening. That seems to be the cycle that happens every day. And that's uh, to be expected for tiredness to follow a circadian 24 hour rhythm. That could, we could capture by this so-called cosinor model, that's sine cosine type of function. And we may also wonder if such cycles affect PA Positive affect here increases um, towards the middle of the day and then goes down, increase and then down, increase and down. So that uh, positive affect could perhaps also be, that variation can be captured by its Arcadian type of cycles model. And you may actually ask yourself then, and what is the relationship between uh, PA and tiredness? You see that when tiredness is low, positive affect tend to be high, 
same thing here and when uh, tiredness goes up positive affect goes down so we see a distinct relationship opposite uh, cycles feature for the two uh, outcomes and you may ask yourself is positive affect just another measure of not being tired does positive aff affect uh, convey something beyond just being tired? So you come to the third question here. Is there a relationship between tiredness and positive affect after accounting for these cycles, after controlling for these circadian 24-hour rhythms? And that's going to be a key uh, topic that we're going to come back to also towards the end of this talk. So turning to slide four then, what we're going to focus on in this talk is uh, to a large extent residual relationships between PA and tiredness. And ask ourselves then the question again, is there a relationship between tiredness and PA after accounting for cycles? That is, is there a residual relationship? And we can draw a simple picture of this. We have positive affect at certain time point T here and we have tiredness at the same time point and we want to uh, see how the cycles at uh, time point T affect the two variables and we are not interested in the effect of tiredness on PA but rather we're interested in what's left in tiredness after we've taken out the cycles influence that is what is in the residual here we're interested in how that residual influences the residual or positive affect. So this is the path that we're interested in and that's a linear regression which also has a residual. Now the paper and the talk shows that uh, using we need we're using only two cycles variables we need not one but also a second one can account for these circadian rhythms using the so-called cosinor model sine cosine modeling. Turning to slide five, what we're going to end up looking at, at the, in the epilogue at the very end, is a bivariate two-level residual DSA model with cycles that looks like this. Quite complex and in line with standard DSA, what we show here is the uh, outcomes at time point T and time points T minus one, so we can show directly in the model relationships between them. At the top we have PA, at the bottom we have tiredness, we have a within part of the model, variation across time, and a between part of the model, variation across individuals. So again, what we're looking at here, if we focus on time point T, in this part of the model, we're interested in the residual in tiredness after we've taken care of the cycles, which are uh, represented by X1 and X2. After we've taken cycling cycles into account, what is the residual of tiredness and how does that residual affect the residual in positive affect where we've also taken out the cycles influence. Now this model then complicates the picture even further by having uh, random effects that is coefficients, regression coefficients that vary across individuals. So we have seven such coefficients that then become continuous latent variables seven more circles on the between level in addition to the random intercept. Now this is a complex model uh, where you certainly should not start the analysis with this kind of a model but start with the details of the model that we're going to go through step by step. First doing univariate analysis of one variable at a time and first doing analysis without random effects and uh, we're going to take them through um, a series of five steps that are outlined in the paper.